Hello everyone and a very big welcome to you to church today. We are so glad that you decided to join us and we really do hope and pray that this next 45 minutes is a time where God speaks to you and impacts your life. We are very excited about two things in particular. Our Two Little Fishes Play School has opened up again. And so Friday was the first day that we had all our kids back at school. Uh, the teachers have been so excited um, just to be back and it's been great to see the kids and the action that's been happening up there. Please won't you keep our little school in your prayers and be telling people who might be looking for a place to slot their kids, tell them about our little school. It really is a wonderful place for kids to be cared for. Our second thing that we're greatly excited about is Homeground Kids and Coffee has opened up again as well. We've been open for takeaways for quite a while, but now we are open as a restaurant again. And over the last few days, we've seen people coming and sitting down and having food, which has just been so exciting to see. Um, it's open, our playground is open as well. And um, we really would like to ask you, particularly appealing to you who are part of our church family, to support us. Just like everyone in the restaurant business, we really have taken a hit over the last few months. And so if you're gonna have coffee anywhere, please choose our kids and coffee. If you need to take your kids anywhere, please choose our kids and coffee. And if you would like a meal, promise you, they are delicious and so hopefully we'll see you there sometime over the next few weeks but for a little bit more about that won't you check out this video we have got great news for you home ground kids and coffee is open and so we would like to invite you to come around for a cup of coffee you can bring your kids get them a milkshake sit down for a bite to eat we are so excited to be open again and the best part is that our playground is open too. You can bring your own scooters or bikes and bring your own hand sanitizer to be sanitized in between each play, but we are open and we hope to see you soon. Morning church family, it's Food Parcel Sunday. Can you believe it's that time again? We've had another exciting month of handing out food parcels and those beautiful blankets that you all made. I cannot tell you how the people appreciate it. We heard a saying during this time, if everyone had a food garden during this time, we would not have seen starvation like we have. And we wanna change that. So in the month of August, we are gonna see how many community gardens, how many home gardens we can set up that will provide food for the families that we normally give food parcels to. Yes, it's the worst time to do it. The pandemic's at its highest but it's actually the best time because planting season is in September and we don't wanna miss out on that. And we actually can't do this without the help. The people we are helping are actually the people who can't normally buy food. So there's no ways they're gonna be able to buy what they need to do for a food garden. So we're looking for donations, donations of money. And if you look at the link below, that's where you would donate to. But if you wanna donate spades and hose and water systems and fences and seeds, there are just gonna be so many needs for this. But the biggest thing we're needing, and I thought of these three Ps, we're gonna need protection through this time. Protection at the heart of pandemic when we're going back out into the communities. But also peace as we do that. Just peace as we work, as we're with the people. But our biggest need also is gonna be provisions. Provisions so we can actually do it and do it well. We are looking, how do we change from food security to food sovereignty? How do we change that whole system? Thank you so much for your support. We so, so appreciate it. Sandy always is just so full of excitement. I can't not want to get involved in what she's talking about. Thank you, Sandy, and thank you to the cast team for all that you are doing. And thank you to you who have been supporting over the last bunch of months. There are so many families out there and so many lives who have been impacted through your generosity. And we from Home Ground Church say the same thing to you. Thank you for your continued support, your financial support and your generosity. Um, you are the reason why our ministries can keep going. And so with that being said, Said, we are going to go into a time of offering right now. It's a time for you to give your tithes and your offerings, remembering that everything we have is a gift from God, and it really is a privilege and a joy to be able to give back to Him. So let's do that, and then we're going to go into a time of singing. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the Sunday service. My name is Dylan, also known as Dewey to some of you. Um, I used to be an intern at Wessel Baptist, now known as obviously Home Ground Church. 
And uh, I've moved up to Hilton. I've started my own business um, as a beekeeper. So I've got that going. And I also work at our uh, family's business, which is a picture frame uh, business. So having said all of that, it's also very great to be with you guys for the service. Um, and as we worship together, let's, uh, let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you are sovereign. Thank you, Jesus, that you're in control. And as we worship you today, Lord, we, we pray that our hearts may, may connect with yours, Lord. Even in these uncertain times, Lord, let us hold into your hope. That you're in control, Father, and that you love us and that you are with us at all times. So let's sing together.
God not always give us what we ask. When God doesn't answer. But what about when God does not answer? When God doesn't answer. When it takes God a long time to answer. Or takes a long time to answer. And one reason is because he knows better. <laughs> so I personally think that God is always going to answer. And if I'm not hearing him, it's because I'm not listening or it's not his timing to answer me. So I've asked God for many things. Maybe it's not the right time to answer. What do I do when he takes a long time to answer is wait. And that can be really difficult sometimes, especially because like everything in life is so on demand. Um, but I wait. My mom was a person who taught me to to be patient with with certain things, and also to have faith 
that God will reveal what I would need. You see, he sees the real need under the request and he meets that need. All the things I didn't get answered were probably stuff I probably didn't actually need to be answered. One of my favorite like phrases, I guess, is worship in the wait. And I think that's so powerful. At the end of it all, I know that his plans are good for me. And he remains to be God. He remains to be my God. See, when it comes to prayer, God does answer us, but sometimes He translates our prayers. He gives us what we would have asked if we knew everything He knows. Maybe, maybe He wants to develop my character. So yeah, just wait. <laughs>
your type of prayer. Shift it into a zone where you start praying more Sudoku type prayers, where you're engaged and you're trusting God. Prayer, simply put, is speaking to our Heavenly Father. It's about building relationship with God. Prayer is also, as John pointed out to us last week, about asking God. Jesus wants us to pray. God wants us to ask Him for stuff. Now, when we pray, the ideal would be to have God answer all of our prayers. That would be the perfect scenario when it comes to praying. We pray, God answers, everybody's happy. Now, the reality is that sometimes it feels like God doesn't answer our prayer. And this is normally where it goes wrong for believers. It's in this phase of our prayer that we start doubting, we start questioning whether prayer actually works. We start questioning if God's word is true. Because God, your word said, I can pray anything I want to in Jesus' name and you'll give it to me. And yet I haven't received this thing I've asked for. We start doubting if God's word is true. And we start doubting if God even exists. And all this, because God hasn't answered our prayer in the way I want him to answer. Why is God not answering my prayers? Is he ignoring me? Or is there something else going on here? So today, we're going to spend some time examining why God isn't answering my prayers. And um, prayer is sometimes so simple and easy. And other times it's so complex and difficult. God, at times, is very easy to understand. Yet, he's unfathomable. So I admit today, as I attempt to explain an infinite God, from my finite perspective, I know I'm going to fall short. And I know the things we're going to be looking at today is not going to be complete and perfect. But I can promise you there's going to be some good stuff. And I know there's good stuff because God gave it to me. So here's the question. Why is God not answering my prayer? I'm going to give you three points today. Feel free to write it down. Um, take some notes if you feel like you want to do that. First question, uh, question is, why is God not answering my prayer? Well, firstly, I think sometimes God chooses to remain silent. Sometimes God chooses to remain silent. And, and what I've come to conclude over the last month, two months, is that there's various reasons why God chooses to remain silent sometimes. First reason is this. Um, before we moved to, to Durban, we lived in Joburg and been, was in full-time ministry there. And uh, uh, Peyton, our daughter, our firstborn, is, she, I think she just turned two years old and, or she was just about to turn two. And Cara and I realized that she has only seen her grandparents on both sides probably three or four times um, in two years. And as a family, we thought that this, we don't want this for us. And we wanted to make a shift. And, and we really asked God if he could make a way for us to, to move to Durban and still have Cara teaching and have me be involved in, in full-time ministry. So, so what I did was I started seeking God. I started praying. Every day I started praying. I was like, God, please make a way for me. And then all this pray, prayer led to silence. And then I felt God say to me, well, if you're going to be praying, that's awesome. But you need to actually get out of this boat. Staying inside your comfort zone is going to bring no results. You need to actually step out of the comfort zone, step out of the boat, and start walking on water. I need you to actually start seeking and praying. So that's what I did. I kept praying, but then I started seeking for opportunities in Durban. So um, I thought, hey, Lord, um, I want to be in ministry. How about I think of my favorite church in Durban. I'm not going to tell you the name of that church right now. Um, and then I thought, I love what these guys do. I love the excellence they operate in. I love the way they do worship. I love the way they preach. I love their philosophy around leadership. I love everything they do. I want to work for those guys. Lord, please make a way. So I phone up this church and I say, guys, I'm awesome. Hire me, please. <laughs> and the guy just said to me, Jacques, we, we actually don't hire externally. We raise up leaders from within our organization. We actually hire people from, in, from the inside out, uh, from the inside of our, of, our, of our culture. And then God closed that door. And I kept praying, I kept seeking. Second on my list was another church just around the corner from where I'm staying at the moment. I found out that they were looking for a senior pastor. Now, at that stage, stage of my life, I wasn't quite keen to lead a church. Um, I don't think I was ready. And I, I wanted to learn. I wanted to grow so much more before I step into that role. And um, I phoned up this church and I said, guys, I, I believe you've got a, a vacancy and you're looking for a senior pastor. And the first thing they asked me was if I was ordained within their denomination. And I said, no, I wasn't. And that automatically closed down the door. I said, but I've been ordained in the AFM and we, our, our denominations are, are quite similar. 
He said, no, no, that's fine. But, we, but we're guessing we might need a youth pastor someday. And then and God just closed that, that door. And then at this stage, I was getting desperate because I was praying and I was seeking. And then I thought, maybe I can phone my old school. I've got some relationship with the headmistress. And I phoned her, I phoned her up and I said, hello, uh, Tani Marena. <laughs> so Jacques, I hope you can remember me. Um, this is what's happened in my life. I've been involved in full-time ministry. I'm actually a qualified counselor. Maybe you didn't know that about me. What I didn't tell her was that I suck at counseling. I said, I'm a qualified counselor. Would you please hire me to be the counselor at the church? I was literally just trying everything, hoping God would answer a door. And even while praying, even seeking, I heard silence. Sometimes God chooses to remain silent. Now, what was happening in this time? Why was God being silent in this moment? I'm going to reveal that in a little bit. Shortly after that, my mother-in-law phoned me. Now, guys, I don't know if you knew this. God can speak through mother-in-laws. Just joking, obviously. God speaks to everybody. Mom, if you're watching, I love you. Um, but she phoned us up and said, listen, I heard through Diane, who's Cora's cousin, that Cora's cousin's husband, Graham, found out that Westfall Baptist Church was actually looking for a youth pastor. I thought, well, I've been seeking, I've been trying. Phoned up, spoke to Debbie, um, went through the whole process, and here I am today. Why did God choose to remain silent in that period before he actually answered my prayer? I believe that he was preparing the way. He was working behind the scenes, actively preparing the way, so that when the moment was right, I could step into his purpose in my life. God chooses to remain silent because he's busy behind the scenes. Another reason I believe God chooses to remain silent is because he has already spoken to us. And you know it. If God has already spoken to you, he doesn't have to say it again. He's already spoken. Now, the truth is, sometimes we don't know that God has already spoken because we don't read the Bible. The Bible contains God's word and God's will and God's purpose for our lives. And if you don't know what God's will is regarding your finances read the Bible. If you don't know what God's will is regarding your, your marriage, read the Bible. He's already spoken. And our job is to read God's word and to obey. Listen to James 1 verse 22. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So God has spoken already. Our job now is to do what the word says. Another reason I believe God chooses to be silent sometimes is because he said no. He said no. And the other day, Levi wanted to play with a pair of my side cutters. It's, um, it's a tool. It's very similar to pliers. He wanted to play with this pair of side cutters. And I said, Levi, no. This is dangerous. You could hurt yourself and you could potentially hurt someone else. So I took the side cutters from him and I went around the back of my house to go sort out my tenant's um, status light for, the, for our alarm, alarm system. So I take off the status light, put the side cutters next to me. The next moment... I feel excruciating pain in my arm. And here's Levi, little dude, standing there with the side cutters that I told him not to play with, clipping the skin on my elbow. I was raging. I said no to him because I knew he was going to hurt either himself or someone else. Sometimes God chooses to be silent because he said no. He said no. It's not good for you to have this thing you asked for. And lastly, sometimes God chooses to say no because he said, not now. Levi also asked me one day while we were sitting in my car, he says, Dad, I want to drive. He was two years old. Dad, I want to drive. I want to drive. I said, no, dude, you're not going to drive. You're not going to drive. Bottom line, not going to drive. And then I, and he kept crying. He started stomping his feet. He started spitting and shouting. And I was like, you're not going to drive. And then I tried to think of a way to explain to him that he can't drive now. One day... When he's 18 years old, when he's got his driver's license, I would love for him to drive my car, but now is the wrong time. Can't drive now. What I said to him then was, Levi, you can't drive now, maybe later. That was the best language I could come up with for a two-year-old. And as I said that, I knew he was going to come to me later again. Not even kidding. Five minutes later, he says, can I drive now? Can I drive now? Sometimes God chooses to be silent because he wants you to wait. Timing is wrong. He doesn't necessarily need to say, not now, because the language that he wants to use to express to us is far beyond our understanding, because God is infinite and all-powerful and all-knowing. 
Sometimes we interpret God not answering our prayer. Point number two. Sometimes we interpret God not answering our prayer. Um, we interpret God's whisper as God's silence. Sometimes God is not answering our prayer because he's whispering to us and our lack of discerning is causing us to think that he's being silent. God is actually whispering to us. Now, during my sabbatical, um, I spent a lot of time, I've mentioned this already, spent a lot of time praying, a lot of time seeking God. And quite honestly, a lot of the time I was frustrated because I thought that God was ignoring me. I thought he was being silent. And then one night I remember I was sitting outside, I went out to pray, I prayed for a specific thing and I just felt like God was not saying anything. And I was so frustrated with the silence that I decided to, to go into sort of a, a silent strike. And I'm not even kidding, I sat there for the next two hours saying, Lord, your word says I must be silent and, and listen. I must wait on you and that's what I'm going to do. But I was, I was really frustrated and I expressed that to God. I really believe that God wants us as his children to express what we're feeling, to lament, if you want to use that word. And I did. But then in protest, I sat there for not kidding, two hours waiting, hoping that God was going to say something. Nothing. At the end of the two hours, all of a sudden, a rush of memories popped into my mind. And what I had interpreted to be silence over this last month, God reminded me of all the things he'd actually whispered to me during this time. I missed it all because I was in the wrong frame of mind. What is God whispering to you? And are you able to discern it? Another reason we think God isn't answering our prayer is because sometimes he answers us in unexpected ways. Sometimes he answers us in unexpected ways. So there's this prophet named Elijah and God sends him to go proclaim to the people that God was going to send a famine and God was going to send a drought. And he does. He obeys God and he tells God's people God's going to send famine and drought. Um, and then that's what happens because God honors his word. And during this time, um, scripture says that God provided for Elijah by sending crows to bring him meat. And he was lying by, he was close to a brook where there was water and God was providing for him. And then the water ran out. And then God sent, said to Elijah, I want you to go to this town and there's going to be a woman she's a widow and she'll provide for you i will provide for you through this lady okay so so god speaks to elijah clearly elijah obeys he gets up and he goes there and he arrives at this place and and, and lo and behold there is this woman who was a widow she had she had a son and um elijah knowing that there's a drought knowing that there's famine there's no water there's no food approaches this lady okay and he says to her Please give me a cup of water. Give me something to drink. Now let's just quickly pause there. I want you to do, try, if you can, try and imagine yourself being in this lady's position. Imagine being in a place where there's no food and there's no water. Okay? It's, it, this is a real problem. You, you might die. You have very little resources at your disposal. And then someone comes to you, says... He's a man of God, and you might know him as a man of God. And it looks like God may actually have been answering your prayer. You've been praying for God to provide for you for ages. I mean, you're, in, in, you're hungry, and you're thirsty, and your son is hungry, and he's thirsty. And you've been praying, God, please send a solution. I need a breakthrough, or else we're going to die. And then this man of God eventually shows up. And what he does is, he doesn't answer, he doesn't bring the solution that you thought. In fact, it seems like he makes the situation worse. Because what he does is he says, I know, lady, you and your son have very little resources, but give me something to drink. And then this lady actually does it. She's like, okay, uh, we don't have anything to drink, but I'm going to get you some water because you asked for it. And then as she walks away, he says, also, can you give me some bread? And this lady responds and she says, sir, I promise you by your God, that all we have left is a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. I'm going to make a cake or bread with this little bit of resources we have. I'm going to eat some. I'm going to give some to my son. Very little bit of food. And then we're going to die. Then Elijah says, <laughs> that's okay. Go make that bread, but feed me first. Can you imagine? I'm like reading the story and I want to say like, Elijah, dude, what are you doing? Let them eat first at least and you eat the leftovers. But that's not what he does. Now imagine being in this lady's position. You're asking God for a breakthrough, potentially. Asking God to provide for you. And then he sends this man of God 
And it seems like the situation gets worse. You need to surrender your last bit of water. You need to, you need to feed this man first before you feed yourself and your son. It looks like the, thing, the situation is getting worse. She couldn't recognize in that moment that God was answering her prayer in an unexpected way. She does it anyway. She obeys this man. She goes, she makes the bread, and then Elijah says to her, I promise you, until this drought is over, your flour will not run out, neither will your oil. And that's what happened. Neither a flour or an oil ran out. Now, here's the thing. I would not have recognized God's answer in that moment when the prophet showed up because God answered in an unexpected way. God might be answering your prayers in unexpected ways. And you may be thinking God is being silent. We just need to be able to identify that this is God speaking to us and answering our prayer in a different way than we thought. I'm going to wrap this up. Why does God not answer our prayer? Well, he chooses sometimes to remain silent. He chooses to not say anything for a reason. Sometimes God actually answers our prayer, but he whispers it. We need to discern God's voice. And sometimes we think God is not answering our prayer because he answers our prayers in unexpected ways. And I pray because because um, I love God and I want to help people and when I help people it makes me feel very happy inside my heart because it's a very very good feeling. Hi there my name is Bianca and I want to tell you a little bit about one of my daughters who is a prayer. She was born deaf like her sisters and one of the things we as parents were most worried about when we found out she was deaf and realized how complicated our communication with them might be um, was whether or not they would be able to have a relationship with God. And I think in my mind, I related being able to have a successful relationship with God with being able to communicate well. And um, I was humbled in, in terms of what I realized to be true and how I realized God was so much bigger than the limitations I had placed on him. When Talita was um, very small, when she was about three, she had no language, we only found out she was deaf at three, but she would spend time um, in a very um, focused way, usually on her bed in the evenings and we just thought she was just being quiet. And as she developed language, she would tell us that during that time she was talking to Jesus. Um, and that blew my mind because it made me realize that she was able to talk to Jesus and communicate with Jesus before having any human language, which was quite amazing. Um, she's always really had a, a compassionate heart to pray. Um, and to be completely honest, when she prays, whether she prays um, while she signs or whether she prays out loud, they are always exceptionally simple prayers. Um, there's no eloquence whatsoever, um, but they're sincere, they are simple, they are short, and they are, they're honestly the simplest prayers I've ever heard, but they are powerful. And we have seen that firsthand as a parents. Um, lots of people ask us to give prayer requests to Talita or ask her directly because her simple little prayers, which she's collected on a prayer board, um, get answered. I had the ball because it's helped me to remember everything, all the notes that helped me to remember everything. Um, yeah. And so we've realised over time that she's an intercessor and um, well, she takes her responsibility really seriously and really considers it's a privilege to collect prayers for other people. There's lots of things to pray for. Um, I also pray for people to get better, I uh, pray for people to get babies, I um, uh, pray for poor people, I pray for people to um, have food and they will be safe. And um, one thing that I've loved is um, out of her own idea she started a, an answered board where she's collected the prayers that God has, has answered. And the other board I have um, is for um, answering board 
that oil my answer goes on there so I can look how amazing God is and remember. And it's just such an amazing faith builder to look at that board and to remind ourselves of the faithfulness of God in listening to a little girl's very simple requests of total fa um, faithfulness and just total conviction that her Heavenly Father is listening. There's no doubt in her mind and there's just this confidence but without any um, arrogance. It's an incredible thing to watch a child pray. And um, she came to me about three years ago um, just before going to bed and said, Mom, I know why I'm here. And I, and I said, oh, that's amazing because I'm still not sure why I'm here, but why are you here? I think um, the reason why God sent me here is to um, pray for other people and help them to get better. Amazing. And so her story has been a testimony to our family, um, a real encouragement to us of God's uh, faithfulness when we bring um, our prayers to Him and yeah, a real encouragement to pray because this is something that God's done with her. It, it hasn't actually come as um, an overflow of her parental example or anything like that. It's, he didn't need us. He was able to connect, connect with her and share his call on her life with her even before she had human language. And that for me is amazing. Long before we found out our girls were deaf, a special Christian friend um, gave us a plaque for our home and she felt like, and she said to us, she just really feels like God has this word for our home and our family. And it said, quiet in yourself that you may be able to hear the whisper of God's voice. Little did we know then how literal <laughs> that would apply to our family with deaf children. And interestingly, one thing um, Talita says that she does to hear God's voice better is she takes off her cochlear implants and when she does that she's got absolutely no sound. Her world is completely silent and it's in that silence that she finds it easier to hear God's voice. Now today we looked at why, what is God up to when he's not answering our prayers. Please, please, please don't miss next week. Next week I'm going to be speaking about what should we do when God is not answering our prayers. Slightly different. What is God up to? We spoke about that today. What is God up to when he's not answering our prayers? And next week I'm going to speak to you about what should we be doing if we are hearing silence, if God is not answering our prayers. Please do not miss next week. Have a great week. See you again soon.